friends. Today I decided to um, grab my pad here. Um, I'm going to make a bird. I uh, think I'm going to make me a bird. And so I want to make a shape. So I don't know. I'm going to try a big bird right now. Why? I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for. But I kind of made, was thinking, well, maybe I can use it for a canvas or something like that. So here is a big bird body shape, like a cartoony type of thing, I think. We can use it either this way or that way. Maybe I'll do a smaller one. Why I'm doing it this shape, I don't know. It just kind of came to me to do because then you could do like the eyes and the feet feathers that kind of thing I don't know I'm just playing around here and actually this would be a good size for a wing actually so I'm going to turn that into a wing so I'm going to work on a mixed media random mixed media bird here and I have no reason for it except for just I want to play and sometimes when we make something it motivates us to make something else and that's really fun to do so I'm just going to cut that out this is how I make my patterns on these for things um, paper dolls um, different birds I have made in the past. So now I have my, see this paper here? This is all my scrapbook, my scrap paper, scrapbook, and even punches that I had, you know, used punched out on scrap paper. I even have sprinkles on here, sparkles. Um, and I used, I can't remember, I think I might use some kind of Mod Podge. This one's a little stiffer than the, the other stuff. I like to use de decoupage glue is better, so I found that better as you can move it more. This one's quite a bit more stiff than my first or some of my other ones. But you can use this to make journals. So it's layered. What I did in the first layer, this one I might have, I have coffee filter layers. And then I did um, scrap papers. This is even like a card that I punched out something that I used. Um, so this is a playing card right here. And this is just, you know, napkins, pieces of papers whatever so pull that stuff out so I'm just going to use this paper so this is what I use my layered papers for or my box when I have my scraps and I save them um, until I have like I have a certain amount a box filled and then after that I might if unless it's really nice paper I'll keep it but after that after this particular box is filled I get rid of them because I can't keep I could have scraps forever and ever and ever and ever and you know and be totally having an issue with my life here if I kept kept all my scraps but I keep the most the best paper scraps if I have like um, tissue paper that I colored and it has really nice psychedelic sec type of colors or something really cool that I want I will keep it so let's see here kids using scissors so I'm gonna cut with my best scissors for if I make a good uh, book cover so that's okay for a journal I might even actually because it's so stiff I might even just use it for a journal because make another one for other stuff. Also, too, is good to use to make birds and stuff like that is um, jelly plates, prints, blah, jelly, blah. They're speaking with my tongue, my new tongue. Jelly prints are awesome. And I don't have enough of them. <laughs> so I got to get some, make some. I have little ones, but I need to get a bigger jelly plate to make a full sheet size because that's what I want so this is what I have see now if you can see with the the wing you can see that this could be a little face here it could be a wing you can make a little funny bird here look at the face here and the wing so you can see how that could turn into a bird pretty easy
and for some reason I have my Mod Podge open. Oh, it's because I was refilling it. And that's the layered paper. Can you see the layers? So, this is the thing. Just make something, teardrops, you know, I'm going to put a little bit of, I'm just going to put a dab of um, jeepers. The kids did not a dab of gesso and I think it might be even too much so I'm just going to take some of it off I'm just putting a dab of gesso on there like I said I think it's too much but and I'm going to wipe it some of it off see if I like that I don't even know if I like that I need more uh, my paper towels. I need more of my paper towels. I think I'm I'm out. I'm out. So I'm just gonna use my water here to maybe pick up some of that. I was just kind of seeing if I could lighten it up. I'm not too sure how light I like that, but it's not too bad. I do like the the gold. Now I have to find something to stick this. Just so on. So I'm just going to randomly do like a uh, cross pattern here and see if that helps with any. When I do sprays or something, it might look really cool. Who knows? No sense in wasting it. So this is it. I'm just going to put a little bit of Mod Podge just for the sheen now. Again. I like that. So I might have made a mistake putting the gesso on. I don't know, depending on how I like it after. But you just never know. Don't judge a book by its cover. You just don't know until you're done, right? You know, you get into it more. So that is that. And that's a lot of gesso, but that's okay. okay. And I'm going to use um, this Deco Art modeling paste here for the first time. So we'll see how I like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little, just a little, that might even be too much. I don't want to use too much. I think that's even, yeah. See, that's a lot. Because it's a little bird, right? So, so I'm going to use my Deco Arts, and I just opened it fresh. Too much. So now I'm just going to kind of like, I'm going to make my bird a little bit like, his tail feathers are going to come out here. It's going to have his wings over here. So I want to put a little bit of texture on my bird and be a little different and weird. So, and I knew I didn't want too much. And the color's not quite the color I wanted, but hey, whoops, it's okay. So I'm just going to use what I have here to make... Some of this guy come through. And in fact, I'm actually going to spray some of this. I'm going to be very bold with it and spray it. I know. I know. It's terrible. I'm re really not liking using up this color. I love this color. Okay. Now, we have to, we have to get this down on the card here. So now what I'm doing, right at the second, getting it back down on the card here. Oh, isn't that pretty? And it's got the texture of the modeling paste as well. Love it. Look at that. Interesting, interesting. I'm going to grab the modeling paste, the blue. Anyway, there we go. So now... I 
and I'm adding a little bit to my wing. There. We're gonna add a little dry. rust to his belly, I think. So I'm just gonna use my um, Stampin' Up! ink pad because that's what I have here, and I'm just gonna add a little rust to his belly. I think it's cute. I'm gonna have his wing like this. So that's very cute. I might add a tad of rust to the top of the wing. There we go, and a little bit on the tail. I decided that that's the tail today. See, that's the pattern. You can kind of go both ways, so it's pretty cool with that particular go of it. So I'm going to grab my ar I bleh, archival ink, and because that's what I have, and that's my favorite ink on that one, and just go around and really get the edges. And then it, with the thicker parts here, I can go over with my painters or whatever to get the you know, to really get the edge if I, if I don't get enough with this because of the thickness of the layers. The next one I do, I probably won't um, gesso it just to see how that bird turns out. And here he is. So here is, so far, my bird. Isn't he cute? Now I want to have his eyes up here somewhere, a little beak. I'm going to grab. What do we have for paper here? Grab some scraps because there's tons of yummy scraps here. You guys should have um, tons of yummy scraps. Here's a scrap paper. Here's some scrap. So I'm going to make a little beak. Just like that, a little beak. And I might make a kind of rounded on the inside, concave, concave on the inside just to give it that good look. Ink the edges. I could even add some orange to my I'm just gonna add some orange to it to make it a little bit of a nice orange beak. These are my homemade alcohol sprays, so a little bit of black. It'll look nice. Dry that up. I like the way um, grab my tube here and grab this. I like the way it runs together. There we go. And what I mean is if you put the black on the orange, see how it kind of just soaks in the paper so neat. So interestingly, good. So my bird's looking pretty neat. The Dollarama a lot of the times, almost all of the time actually. So that is what I do. And we're gonna see what size eyes would look best on this guy and what color. So I have, oops, a pearl eye. I'm gonna glue his little beak on. Where should we put his beak? Right there. Why so serious? He looks so serious. Why so serious? Okay. I don't know. He looks so serious. Oops. Dropping the cap nugget. 
So I'm using tacky glue, Eileen's, Aileen's, I'm saying Eileen's, that's terrible. Aileen's tacky glue, which I love. So do I want to go with a pearl? No. So what I think I'm going to go with is either one of these big ones or this next size down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a black, beautiful black eye right there. Now if I figure out how I want his wings. Right there, I think. So do your birds, whatever, scrap paper. This is all scrap paper. This would have been thrown out if I didn't decide to keep it and use it again. Um, but, yeah, make yourself a little bird. So cute. Now we just need some legs onto the, the piece, like if you're making it on a journal or whatever, you're going to need the leg on there and that kind of thing. So feathers on a tail, we can go with fibers and I think we can even actually use some feathers. So I have a bunch of feathers here in this little, can you see this bag? It's a Mickey Mouse wallpaper and I made it into a, I made it into a bag. And it's really strong because it's wallpaper, like the old kind. So I have feathers in that bag, which would be really cute. In fact, I have feathers that I was kind of playing with a while back. Oh, the cat's knocking things down that have some images on it that I put on there. So I could use those. I can use some of these fluffier feathers. Let's see. I might actually just use some of these fluffier feathers right here because I like the way they go with the, the um, rust if I grab a few colors, I'll grab the brown here and then a nice light kind of a shorty white, just like that. And you can get colorful feathers too at craft stores or dollar stores. So yeah, I buy some feathers and I collect them and I see them interesting feathers and I keep them for other projects because you just never know. Never know. So I'm going to put his feathers one kind of facing down. You can see how the direction of the feathers is. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to do one down, one up. And this one's kind of got a little attitude. But that's okay. And then we're just gonna tack them in there. So what I'm gonna do with this, these is, hmm, I mean I'll just throw some glue on there. This is the Aileen's tacky. We'll see how that works. I could hot glue it, but I didn't put my hot glue on. I like I said before, I rarely use it nowadays. So, very cute. We'll let him dry. I'm going to throw a piece of tape on there. I just got some 
scotch tape, but that's okay. It'll hold it into place. It will, it will. Isn't that a cute little bird? So that was just something I was like, oh, I want to make a bird. That's a big one. We could do little ones, and then we could do little paper feathers or whatever, too. So I'm going to do along him a bit. Because, I mean, we can doodle on them. And don't forget your white painters are really going to make a difference in here, too. Love them. Oh, I'm going to see this one here. This one's got some white going on, but it's not quite dark enough. Or bright. Bright white enough. Oh, another thing I wanted to add was some gold. So I'm going to do that right now. I have some. Where did it go? So I got from Happy Mail some of this gold. And I was thinking it would be nice for the cheek area of the bird. I love gold on everything. Really do. Really do. Isn't he cute? So cute. And this was just, you know, this is not even like seriously the the ultimate bird, but there is my white. I'm going to give him a little dot here. Add a little life to him. Oh, that one's just not in the right spot. There we go. And now I'm just going to go in with my white painters in some spots. Oh, my black is kind of wearing down, so I'm not sure how much of that I can get on there, but we'll see. There's a modeling paste. It's still not 100% dry there. But it's got that gear there, and it's there, and it's there, pieces of it. It's not like... I didn't want it like very visible, but a little bit of it. There we go. He's very cute. So imagine a couple little legs on this little fella, like on a... <laughs> you know? On a page, journal page. Be so cute. Isn't he cute? Or like a canvas or something cute. And I just kind of went crazy with the tail feathers, but you don't even have to have the tail feathers like this. You can do paper ones. It'd be really cute. Or even no tail feathers would be adorable. So that is my guy. My little bird. So I hope you guys like him. And you can... So this is the outcome of my bird. Added a little bit more gold, played with a little more splash of color. I added the legs. These are copper legs from copper wire. And now he's looking really, really cute. And now he can stand up on the little wire um, legs. And I put it back on him, just like that. So I'm just going to put black on his beak. But there you go. There's a cute little 
um, decorative bird and um, you can use them on a canvas but th I decided to put them up on the little legs and use them this and this is the other one I made without any um, white uh, gesso on them and I, I don't know which one I like better but they're different anyways so that's my second one and they stand up if I let them they stand up. Alright, ready? Yeah. 